I know many people who sew who are collectors. We collect different kinds of fabrics, notions, buttons, and how-to books. Specials tools inspire us to make beautiful things, and antique sewing tools are among the things that many of us treasure. Some were inherited, and some were special finds while antiquing. During Victorian times, those sewing tools were kept close at hand on a chatelaine, and we have one today that I think you will enjoy using to display your collection of sewing tools. We have so many things to share with you today that we can't waste another minute. Thank you for coming to my sewing room. Piping has long been one of my favorite trims for smocked children's clothing, the little tiny piping. But I will say this, piping is not just for smart children's clothing. It is wonderful on other projects and it can be as wide or as small as you want it to be. This is a really, really wonderful computer case, which is the black heavy linen fabric with a wonderful gray silk dupioni, beautiful piece of piping that comes around the corners and on the bottom and a really good looking wonderful set of monograms. I, I just think this is a fabulous way to use piping and to make projects for either a man or a woman. And I know I drag my computer around with me nearly everywhere I go. Piping can be done with either a bias fabric or a straight of grain. And there are two places that you would that you would use those. They're a little bit different. This happens to be a bias piece of fabric. I have my cording. I'm going to place the cording just nestle it right in there in between the fabric and then I'm going to use a straight stitch and go as a very close to the cording to make it very pretty. Now the reason I use bias on this particular uh, piece is that I'm going around the corner. Anytime I go around a curve I need to use bias fabric. If I'm not going around a curve straight of grain will be just perfect. And so you, to attach it right sides to right sides, the raw edge of the bias to the raw edge of the fabric, go in once again and very close to the piping, stitch it and then later it will be turned and bias just makes the most beautiful trim. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend and business colleague Steve Jeffrey. Steve is president of Baby Lock USA. Steve welcome to the show. Hey Martha it's great to be here again and I <laughs> do appreciate the fact that you allowed me to present such an easy project a project that even a man can do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get talking about the wonderful world of piping. First, we take a piece of cord and we lay it out on the fabric. And we want the fabric to be right sides down. Then what we're going to do is, is roll the fabric around the cord to form the piping. And we want to stitch that in kind of loosely just to hold it in place. And let me show you how we do that. We place it on the machine using a pearls and piping foot. Now, the pearls and piping foot has a, has a special groove cut into the bottom to allow the cord to pass freely and give you the best result. If you're using larger cord, you can use a zipper foot. If you're doing a smaller cord, you can use a pin tuck foot or an invisible zipper foot. Now, after you have the piping done, you want to take it and you want to trim the excess fabric off of that. Now, this is a, a piping trimming tool. Now, it has a 5 8 inch seam or a quarter inch seam. And in this case, we'll use a quarter inch seam to trim that excess fabric. That will allow, remove some bulk from the fabric so that it will uh, fit better and work out better on your project. After we trim it, we want to apply it to our project. As we do that, you want to see we want to stitch it down and we want to stitch it very close to the piping. That will give it a very smooth finish and a good end result that gives a very, very nice look to the piece of fabric when it's finished and a nice accent on the project. Now here's a finished project. We've done a computer bag with a beautiful green piping to accent the beautiful fashion pink uh, fabric, and we put initials on it, the Martha Campbell Pullen, That's just it. for you, for your computer bag. Oh, thank you so much, Steve, for bringing that wonderful present for me. I truly appreciate it. Well, and thank welcome. you for being here and for sharing the trick. <laughs> well, you know, Steve, I especially love the those special feet, and I know we've been using the pin tuck feet for tiny baby yes, piping, but yes, then the have. others are wonderful when you're going to use it for something all other than those, those smart clothing we were talking for about. For pillows and for bags and for all types of dresses, all kinds of embellishment and, and accents you can use the piping uh, applications for. Oh, Steve, thank you so much. And now Steve has brought some sewing inspirations to share with you.
Steve, we have some beautiful and very sophisticated projects here. Yes, we do. I understand some of your educators made these to we share have, with we you. We have a wonderfully talented team of educators that create all these beautiful garments that we bring down here to show on your show. Well, I'm glad that you brought them. They this are wonderful black and white, you know how I love to wear black and white. This <laughs> wonderful black and white bag with the bias uh, strips and then the cute little uh, glued on crystals or diamonds as I call those. But you know what I really love is the detail of that wavy edge that's done on the serger. Yeah, it is a beautiful finish. That has the white in the black. Yes. Or you can use any color you want yes, to. You can. It's so pretty. I'll let you hold okay, it right thank here. You. And Steve, we both just love this bag. It is just so good looking. It has the wonderful uh, outline of the with the machine embroidery. And you know what else? Piping. That we yes, just did. we just did piping. Lots that's, of that's piping. Exciting. And you know what I love too is the uh, serger puffing in the middle. Well, and the size of the embroidery you can do now with the technology that's available with the machines is so quick. It's so easy, and it does a beautiful accent finish on that on that bag. And quick. Yeah, I mean, this, quick. Go, this is one hooping, very isn't quick. it? Absolutely. Yes, one hooping. And you know what? People are busy, but this, I've always said sewing and embroidery is pure relaxation for me. It is. It's therapy. Wonderful heirloom. You know how I love heirloom. And this is heirloom sewing by Serger. Absolutely yeah, a wonderful beautiful. tank top to be worn underneath a jacket mm -hmm. or to be worn by itself in the summertime. Yes. This is the most wonderful pillow with more piping, and I do love the surged edges on the silk dupioni. Yeah, that's Surged cool. edge here, that wonderful wavy, wavy surged stitch, edge, yeah. surged edge here, and double needle pin tucks, and the wonderful buttons with machine stitching. You see, creativity. Really accents it, doesn't creativity it? Creativity is yes. just women who sew and flowing. men. It's flowing. And, men. <laughs> <laughs> and another absolutely beautiful pillow with crayons, machine embroidered, more piping out of the crayons. Crayon yes, fabric. Or, that's right. And a wonderful saying. You know what? I love to do pillows like this that have favorite sayings or verses of scripture or favorite poems. They're so right. nice to give very, us very gifts. Personalized. It, very personalized. Very nice. Make, it makes yes. it very personal. And then, Steve, I always love quilts. And this beautiful, beautiful heirloom quilt here has the tucks and has the serger puffing and, of course, the, the bow ties. The bow tie I, the we, love the, we love those bow ties. Yeah, they, are, they are really nice. And they're kind of fun. I thought they yeah. looked very hard at first but then <laughs> I was taught yep yeah, they're very, very easy, easy which is kind of misleading but the wonderful uh, little gingham fabric and the lilac and the white a beautiful beautiful baby quilt for a little girl Steve thank you so much for bringing these wonderful My things pleasure. and now Steve has a really so quick so easy project for you Steve, I love this easy to sew project that you brought for our viewers. Well, it is so quick, so easy, and it's so <laughs> much fun to do. We're going to do a camera case today, and let me show you how to do it. There, we have some finished examples here where you can match the colors, use different techniques, whether it's quilting or heirloom, embroidery. You can pull some fabric out of your sash to make it any color or combination that you like. Let me set that over okay. there. Okay. To start, you take your fabric and you cut a piece and you put right sides together. You stitch along the outside a quarter inch seam across the bottom and across both sides and you leave a little opening at the top. Now you leave a little opening at the top so that you can turn it right sides out on the next part of the project. What you do then is lay it out flat, press it, and you top stitch the top and the bottom to close that opening so that uh, you can finish your project. Next you want to take your camera and you lay it on the uh, piece and so you can measure how far you want to fold up the fabric. You remove the camera and you simply stitch, top stitch both sides of the fabric and then your project really is done. And you can take and embellish that flap with, like I said, heirloom, embroidery, quilting techniques to make a quick little easy project. And it really does fit your camera it by laying your camera, camera down there. It, it's nice, just put it protects down there. it and it, uh, it does a very, very nice job. And you know what? You have several ideas. There are several examples. This is strip quilting yes, here. Yes, it is. And this is heirloom. Yes, it is. And we love yes. heirloom. We do love heirloom. And then more of the uh, quilting or just strips put together. And as you said, this is a great way to use yes, your stash, what you have left over from it's other a projects. Fun little project. <laughs> yeah, from other Steve, projects. Steve, thank you so much for it's being here today. It's always great to be here, Martha. Thank you. And now I have some sewing accessories for you. I think this is one of the most beautiful projects we've ever had on Martha's Sewing Room. 
Those of us that love to sew, love to do handwork, love to sew of any kind, love chatelaines. This one is so pretty and really not very hard to make at all. I just want you to see how pretty it is. I especially love this little uh, scissors case. It's, it's just beautiful. I have my little fancy scissors that are in here, which are kind of match it, which makes it pretty. And there is a tassel at the end. You can see the machine embroidery and the little crystals that are on, I just call those diamonds. This is a beautiful, beautiful French ribbon with a French trim. Now the next, I'm gonna show you how to do that scissors case. Now the next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is what we lovingly call frou-frous. And I know when Joanna was a little girl, I made these all the time to go on her dress, on her French dresses. Now at the end of the frou-frou, there is a wonderful little uh, sewing notion that is so elegant and pretty. I bet you didn't know what it is. That is a very fancy, seam ripper. Of course, none of you would ever need a seam ripper, but occasionally I do. Then last but not least is this absolutely gorgeous little pin cushion with the machine embroidered bows at the top and the little crystals and of course a few glass head pins. As you know, I always use glass head pins. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is to see how easy it is to make the portion that goes around your neck. This is gorgeous French ribbon. Of course, you could use anything for that part, but I happen to love this elegant ribbon. I made mine, I turned it down to make points. You simply sew it and make your points. And then this elegant French trim here, you just put it all the way around the edge and zigzag it down. You don't have to do anything to finish the ribbon because it's already finished. The next thing to make, let me pull this back over here so you can see. The next thing to make is the pin cushion. This is all done. This is a, a machine embroidery pin cushion and I'm going to show you the different steps to making this pin cushion. Let me turn it over. The first thing you do is sew the outline of a beautiful oval shape in your hoop and you know what we also put some batting on the back of this because pin cushions need a little bit of cushy something to stick the pins in. So the first area in the hoop you do the uh, outline first then you while it is still in the hoop you turn it over and cut away the excess batting. It is still in the hoop, remember. We pretend like it's still in the hoop anyway. Then you go back and you sew, while it is still in the hoop, you sew your whole beautiful design. Choose some sort of a circular, or in this case it was a beautiful oval. Go ahead and sew your design. Then take it out of the hoop and trim away the excess fabric. We use Silk Dupioni. Now you have to make two of these, one of them in mirror image, because I'm going to need to sew one on the front and one on the back. Here is the second one. I've done one on the mirror image, one on the front, and one on the back, both of them with a the little padding in it. And then I'm just going to zigzag the two together, and that makes my beautiful pin cushion. Let me bring this back up here one more time. That makes the beautiful pin cushion. And of course, I'm going to put a few uh, crystals on it and make a few little loops with this pretty little edging. This is showing that it is in pink. So you can use any color you want to. Now the next project we're going to do is this wonderful scissors case. And this also is done with an embroidery machine. Here's the scissor case with the little scissors in it. The first step is to put it in the hoop and simply try, choose the size embroidery and then go ahead and embroider your design and then you have to have a pattern. Whatever, whatever shape you need for your particular scissors, you'll have a pattern. And then you will cut out the top of that design using your pattern. Next, it will be necessary to finish the top of that design. Well, actually the embroidery finishes this one, but I've got to make a bottom. So I'm gonna trace off the bottom and I will finish the bottom with a zigzag, first a narrow zigzag and then a wider zigzag. And then let me just pull this back up here. The whole thing is finished and put together the front and the back, which you have to make in the front and the back by zigzagging around. The next wonderful part of this chatelaine is what I call a frou-frou or a ribbon rosette. So pretty to use on the chatelaine and also on little girls' dresses. Now to make a ribbon rosette, it's really very easy. On the ribbon, you go along and you make marks. Oh, these are about two or two and a half inches apart. Here's how you make the rosette. With a hand sewing needle, pick up a little bite, move on down to the next mark, pick up a little bite. I hope I've had my hands out of the way for you. Move on down to the next little mark and pick up a little bite. My bites are a little bit big actually. Pick up a next bite and then you simply pull it in with your thread 
and the ribbon rosette and make it as full or as not full as you want to. And then this little tassel was hung on the bottom of the um, of one of the pieces. Let me see which the tassel was on the scissor case. Now then, to make the little um, seam ripper, you have a bias piece of silk dupioni. It's what we use. You use a sticky and glue it in there and roll it on your seam ripper. And then at the craft store, there's these little hats, I'm going to call it, little piece that comes right down over it. You can put it over the top and then squish it down. You can also run your ribbon through the little loop in the top and then after you after you get the little top on it you'll use this wonderful special tool and put your little crystals on there and I just thought this was so cute that's the fanciest seam ripper I think I've ever seen and now we have some hand embroidery to share with you I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my very dear friend, Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly has authored several books on needlework and is a regular contributor to So Beautiful magazine. Beverly, welcome to the show. Martha, thank you. It's just a pleasure to be here with you and with your viewers as well. Now, Martha, today I want to talk to your viewers about this lovely little backstitch rose. It's a rose that I particularly like to use on baby clothes because it's a very stable um, rose. If you haven't got time to do a bullion rose, then this is a good one to do. It's very stable. So here we are. We're starting very simply. You can see that I've got these two, sorry, three little French knots here. They're just cuddling up to each other tightly, forming that little triangle there like that. Now you will see that I've got, the, there's my center there, and of course I would not normally use quite such an extreme of color change, but it makes it easier for the viewers to see. Um, you can see how I've done these little back stitches all the way around here. Now when I've got to this one, I've got a second layer of going around. And what I want to point out to our viewers, Martha, is the fact that when you take the second row, the stitches, then you don't take them in the same place. Because if I did, then I would end up with just a square rose. And I don't think they've invented <laughs> a square rose yet. <laughs> so you can see here now, I've got just a simple little French knot and we'll just have a little bit of discussion on that one. Um, here we've got just the, these leaves and, and I want to show the viewers just how to get a nice point on the end of their, their leaves. They don't have to worry too much. So here we are. We're going to take this color. We're just going to do that French knot. I like to go over and back. Put your finger on it and then put it in there like that. And then before I take it through, I'm going to pull it so that the knot is actually sitting on the ground, Martha. So often I find girls will say, oh, well, I did this lovely little knot and it's waving in the breeze. It looks more like a pistol stitch <laughs> instead of a French knot. And that's the secret, to have it actually sitting on the ground. So here we are, we're just going through. We've got it looking like that. And there we are. Now you can see here how I've got them. There's that little triangle there, uh, just snuggled up to each other. Don't have them spread apart, just tightly snuggled up there. Now you can see here that I'm going to, I've started to do, I've already gone round the first time and then I'm going to, now I'm just going to take a little stitch like this. It's, it's not really a true uh, back stitch because we're not going all the way back. We're just taking that little stitch like that, pull it like that, then bring it forward and come here in like that and take another one. You can see, and I just want to point this out, you can see how there's my little back stitch there and my next one is here. So when I take the second one on the second time round, then I'm taking it approximately halfway through. So there we are, we're going along nicely like that. We're coming along like this. And of course, if the stitch, if the 
depending on the size of the rows, if the rows gets to in the, a bigger one, then obviously you wouldn't be able to just go directly in between like this in the way that I am like that. But if you, you, you know, on a very tiny baby garment, then it can look really very nice just going round the ones. So there we are. And I'm just going to go over that French knot just once more because I think it's important. And the other thing to remember is always when you come, when you put your needle down again, do leave three or four strands in between. It's not, we haven't got a bead there which will stop and you can go in the same hole. So if you have a situation where that hot, French knot just whistles on down the hole with you as you pull your <laughs> ribbon through, you'd be surprised the way it is, just down the rabbit hole. <laughs> so there we are, we're there. Now I want to just take just a moment to do that that lovely leaf. You can see if you lie that on the ground like that, then the secret is either put your thumb or your finger hard up against the needle like that, then when you pull that ribbon through, you will find how it's just going to curl around. I've used my finger there to make it easier for you to see. It's just going to curl around like that. And you don't have to have square ended leaves. They just look so much better. Of course, it is ribbon stitch, or if you're reading an Australian magazine, it'll be called a split stitch. A split stitch. Oh, Beverly, thank you so very much. It's always wonderful to have you here. Thank you, my pleasure. And now I have a beautiful piece from our vintage collection I would like to share with you. This little dress will date back at least 1880, maybe a little bit before then. I want to show you this adorable little sleeve. You see the little, uh, the two little triangles that go on top of the little puff sleeve? Absolutely precious. The reason I know it's an earlier piece is because of the scoop neck with the drawstring that pulled it in. Wonderful, wonderful uh, detail with the Swiss embroideries, uh, a little piece of Swiss embroidery in the middle and the Swiss trims, lots of pretty French lace. These nice little uh, tucks, the skirt is gathered with those tiny tucks and also a little embroidery. Now, you know that tucks are one of my very favorite things in the whole world. These tucks happen to have been put in by hand. We have a half inch, approximately half inch, half inch, a uh, little over a one inch, half inch, half inch. And then the hem on the bottom is absolutely plain and simple. Sometimes the hem on these little clothes was put in with a straight stitch on a sewing machine. However, this was all done by hand. But since this, if this dress was earlier than some of my 1900 Victorian pieces, although this is Victorian too, of course. So I doubt that this mother had a sewing machine yet because this dress is constructed and made by hand. For my sewing from the heart today, I have a really, really sweet letter from Jacqueline Carter. She said, good morning, Martha. My sewing club, Sew Crazy Club, always does community projects. One year we made stuffed toys for policemen to give to little ones when they had to be picked up because of domestic violence. We make chemotherapy caps for the local cancer center as, as they need them. For the past two years, we have taken to DHR or the foster children. We've taken them as our project. All during the year, we make children's quilts, pillowcases, tote bags, and so forth. We always have several items at Christmas to be given to foster children. And if the DHR office has special needs during the year, we always have something ready for the children. Jacqueline, thank you so much for your work with the foster children and the DHR children. My sister is a social worker. And she told me that one year, one of the a, a group of ladies made a new outfit for every foster child to wear to school that year. And she said that some of these children had never had a new dress or a new shirt. So there are just so many needs for foster children that, for children that we who sew can help fill. And I do so thank you for telling us about your wonderful work for DHR in your area. And although I really don't know where you're from, I think that this would certainly apply to any group of sewing ladies who wanted to get with the, lo uh, the local social workers and find out what the needs for foster children are. 
I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a good time. I have. Now, I really, really want to invite you to come back next time.